Hi everyone, uh, this is Melissa from ReadySetKimono.com and this is my good friend Evelyn. Hello, you might know me as Girl Gamer Gap from YouTube. Uh, today Evelyn has uh, her sister and a friend in town from the Netherlands and they would like to dress up in kimono, all three of them. <laughs> so we're going to do that today and I hope you enjoy the process. Enjoy! This one's called an Edo Komon, and it was invented in Edo in Tokyo, uh, hence the name. And what they do is they actually have a stencil with all these little dots on it, punched in it. And they'll take the fabric and they'll spread it out with a stencil on top. So manual? Yeah, these are all, it, kimono is still very much a hand done process. <laughs> um, but they'll take the stencil and then they'll spread glue over top. Um, and this glue dries on the fabric, and then and then after that they dye it. And so when they dye it, anything with glue on it won't, won't dye. So the, all the little white dots had glue on it at one oh. point, and then they had to wash it all off. <laughs> so these are pretty formal as well. So this one is also formal. It has the, the pattern on the sleeve and on the skirt. Um, flowers actually mean a lot for kimono. It d determines the season. Um, so for example, if you have, what would be a good example? Uh, for example, these are iris, which are a spring flower. If it only had iris, you can only wear it in the spring. Okay. <laughs> yep. But uh, this has also got chrysanthemum, which is fall, and uh, maple leaves, which is fall. So right now what they're doing is they're usually putting several yeah, seasons on they're one. They're pragmatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're being very pragmatic. But if you get into older ones or stuff like this, mm -hmm. which is a spring flower, unknown spring flower, <laughs> um, you could really only wear this around this time of the year. This is actually a really special one. Um, it's waterproof. Whoa. If you feel it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, this is called Oshima Sumugi, and um, Oshima is only done on one small island off the southern coast between uh, the last big island in Japan and Okinawa. And uh, what they do is with these kimono, they will make the fabric, they'll weave it, and then they'll dye it. Mm -hmm. With this one, they'll dye it, and then they weave it, and the pattern comes out in the weaving. So they'll basically line up the threads and mark off the pattern, and whatever parts that they don't want the dye to touch, they'll tie it with cotton thread, and that'll stop the dye from touching the, uh, the threads. And uh, for this one, <laughs> it's a really incredible process. They have two dyes. One is called techigi, and uh, tachigi is made from the wood of a tree that only grows on this island. And they will, they'll, they'll break it down and they'll dye it in the tachigi about half a dozen times, and it turns it a nice red color. And then after that, they take all their threads and they throw them into the mud, into the mud of the rice paddies. <laughs> And they do that about a half dozen times. Yeah. And what that does is it turns the red into a black color. So all this black color here. And then they have to repeat that whole process like eight or ten times. Um, so these kimono can take up to a year to make. <laughs> but they're still considered casual kimono. Um, but the people who actually make them were not allowed to wear them. There are sumptuary laws in effect. They couldn't wear them, so they made them to pay their taxes. So, <laughs> um, it's a dying art, unfortunately. Um, so the, they're getting expensive. Uh, one of these brand new could cost thousands and thousands of euros. I, I have no idea how you looked at how expensive yeah. they are. Where did you find it? I found this at a second-hand store that was oh. having a sale. It was originally 
Uh, 60,000 yen. I don't know how much that is in euros. That's like 500 euros. 500 euros, and I got it for 10,000 yen. Oh! oh no. so. Wow, 70 euros. <laughs> 70 euros. That's amazing. So, <laughs> yeah. So. That's really I was, cool. I never thought I'd be able to own one of these, especially one this nice, because every little piece of black that you see on here was where the mud touched it, and then they had to weave it to get the pattern and then finally sew it. So. <laughs> this one's called Sumugi, and um, Sumugi, originally the silk farmers would sell their best silk to the merchants, and then what they had left over, they used to make their own clothes, and that was called Sumugi. So it's imperfect, there are lumps and bumps and broken threads. Um, you can see right there, there's a little lump right there, there's another one right there. Um, but that made it really classy once the, the higher up started noticing this and they started liking it. So um, with the collar at the back, yeah. you always want room, you don't want it right up against your collar. Um, the more space you have, the sexier it is. It's like having a short skirt in Western clothing. The shorter the skirt is, the sexier it is. So geisha have their collar like really low, like oh. that low. Married women would wear theirs a little closer and unmarried women somewhere in between. Thank you for watching this video by Ready Set Kimono. If you liked what you saw, please share this video with your friends. Interested in kimonos now? Go to Melissa's blog by clicking on this link. Interested in Girl Gamer Gab? Go to her channel by clicking on this link. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching! watching.